coronary intravascular ultrasound or IVS equipment consists of an IVS catheter, pullback device and the imaging console. If lesion lengths have to be assessed, motorized pullback is required. For assessing lesion morphology, a manual pullback can also be done. While manual pullback allows concentration on specific lesions, it may miss some lesions in between if the pullback is not steady. Catheter has to be disengaged while evaluating coronary osteal lesions. Heparin and intracoronary nitroglycerin are given before the guide wire is inserted after the coronary cannulation with the guide wire. The IVAS catheter is then introduced over the guide wire. Images are continuously recorded by the system for later review and analysis. Measurements include the measurement of lumen, plaque, calcium, remodeling, stent length and volumetric measurements. Plaque morphology can be assessed in terms of its geometry and echogenicity. In the geometry, the size of the plaque, its relationship to luminal stenosis, arterial remodeling and eccentricity can be evaluated. Echogenicity could be regarding echolucent and echodense as well as calcified plaques. Thrombus and intimal hypoplasia can be noted. A vulnerable plaque and a plaque with ulceration or rupture can also be found. Assessment of an angiographically indeterminate lesion especially that of left main coronary artery, is an important reason for an IVA study. It can also give guidance for stenting in terms of assessment of stent apposition and good expansion. IVAs can also delineate intramural hematoma and dissection. Incomplete stent apposition can be detected by intravascular ultrasound. In case the balloon has fractured the plaque, but stent has not expanded fully, contrast will fill the space between stent and the arterial lumen and lack of apposition may not be evident on angiography. IVAS will detect this and post dilatation can be advised, resulting in good stent apposition and lesser late lumen loss. IVAS is also useful to find the cause of residual haziness in the standard region. It could be poor dilatation or thrombus which can be differentiated by IVAS. Artifacts are possible in an IVAS study due to guide wire artifacts, ring down artifacts, non-uniform rotational distortion, slow flow, coronary pulsation and motion, catheter obliquity and eccentricity and calcium shadow. Major complications are rare and could include dissection or vessel occlusion. But these major complications occur usually during interventions rather than diagnostic IVAS evaluations. Vasospasms are usually transient and respond to intracoronary nitroglycerin. Transient ischemia may occur while negotiating tight stenosis or small vessels. IVAS can be performed only by operators with significant experience in diagnostic and interventional procedures in the coronaries.